So, Dad died when I was just 20 years old. He used to take me on these trips to the beach every weekend when I was a kid, and we were very close. He was a really good father, and we all loved him very much, but when he passed away, for some reason, I decided to grief by immediately moving on. I felt uncomfortable when people asked me about him because I could never really cope with the idea that he had passed away. That is, until I met a woman who calls herself the memory artist. And I'll explain what she does later on, but she told me that conversations about death are not necessarily painful, and that there are places all over the world where complete strangers meet to openly talk about death and grief. When you get right down to it, at some point we all experience loss and grief, and it's not necessarily a terrible thing. It's just part of living. So there is such a thing as a death positivity movement, but it's not as dark as you think. Basically, some people believe that openly talking about death and grief is ultimately good for you. Death denial is ultimately anxiety, which is fear. We are the animal that knows it's going to die. How do we deal with that terror? This is Megan Rosenblum. She's a medical librarian at USC. She's obsessed with rare books. And she's the co-founder of The Death Salon, which she playfully calls the Coachella of Death, where artists and academics come together to share their work and open up conversations about death. So if you look at life as an infinite resource, then you don't value it as much. If you see it as something that you have a short time and you want to make the most out of it, then you value it more and you tend to be more happy. So death positivity is this should be an ongoing conversation. Okay, how do we help each other through these transitions? Whether the transition is that you're dying or that you've lost someone important to you. You know, talking to people, feeling like you have connections with people, being understood. And this need to be able to comfortably and casually talk about death gave birth to death cafes. But they're not as morbid as they sound. Do you have your tea? Excellent. All right, All right guys. Um, what I'm thinking about is that we should start a conversation. I know. Death interests me. I think this is an experience we all have. And perhaps there's another one. I don't know. Who knows? We'll all find out. Hi. Come in. We'll give you a label. When we think of our own death, when we think of the death of a loved one, often we're just utterly unprepared for that. And I think it's not always easy to have the courage to stand up and say, this is the way I'm expressing myself, this is the way I'm going through this. But things like this death cafe brings people together who can talk more freely. I think that's so healthy. It was interesting to see so many strangers being so open about their views and their grief. This was completely new to me. But death cafes have been around for a few years. The first death cafe was held in London back in 2011 in John Underwood's home. That's the man who developed the model. Since then, there have been more than 7,000 meetings in over 56 countries. And at this particular death cafe in New York City, the waiting list is long. More than 30 people showed up to the monthly meeting I went to. People they engage with these ideas little by little and the adding on and the constant engagement even in small ways can really make big effects because eventually they come home to Thanksgiving and they're like, you know what, I really think we should do advanced directives. Approximately only one in three adults in the U.S. completes any type of advanced directive, which is basically end-of-life care planning for the future in case you're unable to express yourself. Only 44% of all Americans have living wills. And although 89% of Medicare patients say doctors should discuss end-of-life care issues with their patients, only 17% of them say they've had those discussions. But aside from pushing us to be more responsible for when we, or people we love, transition, the death positive movement also encourages people to grief openly and without shame. Something that's always been very difficult for me, until I met Nancy. I'm a memory artist. I actually made up that profession to basically define 
creating a picture of a memory that you wish you had. I do try for a certain kind of realism. It's kind of magic realism. But I think that when you make a tangible dreamscape that looks realistic, then you are also strengthening uh, the memory further. Basically, Nancy believes that through her dreamscapes, as she calls them, she can emotionally heal people by helping them recall happy memories and then turning those moments into art. I haven't seen these pictures in, in 10, 11 years. I mean... What, what were some fun things that you like to do with it? Describe it so that I'm literally walking with you, okay. you know, in that space. Yeah, I mean, I gotta tell you, it was so long ago, and I'm not talking about when I was 20 years old. I'm it doesn't about... have to be accurate. Right, right. It's just, well, it's just like a feel. Um, just take, take a second and think about it. Yes, it was very uncomfortable at first, but eventually I gave in. So here's a very clear uh, memory I don't have a photo of. I sit shotgun right next to him inside his brown wagoneer. We would drive for 30 to 40 minutes to the beach. Were there gulls? There were some, some seagulls, yes. And it felt very warm. I hadn't thought about those trips with my dad in years. Well, it's not about curing the fear of death or you know, not having feelings when someone dies. I don't think it's that. It's more like, I'm here and I'm feeling those feelings and I'm feeling them for real. And that is just like actually being truly self-aware. That's kind of baked into the whole death positivity thing. In the end, everyone's relationship with death is different. And I assume it changes throughout the years. For you, Openly talking about it might help you prepare emotionally or financially for the future, and maybe even make a few friends while at it. For me, it helped me understand loss and grief from another point of view, one that allows me, for the first time, to remember those I love without pain. To me, it's not very frightening. It's interesting. And I would like to listen to people and let them feel what they feel about that moment of transition.